وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُ And whosoever turns to them with friendship and alliance, you now belong to them. You no longer belong to us. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ And Allah condemns it. This is an act of ظُلُمْ, wickedness. And Allah will not provide guidance for people who commit such an act of wickedness. What? Taking Jews and Christians as your friends and allies? Is that what the verse is saying? But a Muslim man is allowed to marry a Christian woman. Isn't it? Except of course in Malaysia. <laughs> So, if, if we use this translation, then he'll have to say to his wife, let me teach you another expression now, Trinidadian expression. You can, you can call your wife, Dudu. So he'll have to say, Dudu, you can be my wife, but you can't be my friend. Huh? Did you hear that? Dudu, the Quran says that you can be my wife, but you cannot be my friend. Kind of strange, eh? Is this what the Quran is saying? Come on. Will you accept that translation? That standalone, defective, deficient translation? No. That's not what the Quran is saying. Well then, what is the Qur'an saying? Do not take Jews and Christians as your friends and allies. They are friends and allies of each other. That is false. Jews and Christians were never friends and allies of each other. That is false. Can the Qur'an be speaking of falsehood? Oh, the Quran is not saying that. But unless you study the Quran to understand tomorrow while standing at Majma'ul Bahrain, the place where the two oceans meet, you will not be able to recognize what the Quran is saying about tomorrow. What the Quran is saying is do not take such Jews and such Christians as your friends and allies who themselves are friends and allies of each other. The Quran is anticipating a time which is to come it tomorrow when there will be a mysterious reconciliation with part of the Christian world not all and part of the Jewish world not all who are going to reconcile with each other and a Jewish-Christian alliance will emerge in the world. When that mysterious alliance is established in the world, then watch it. Watch those Jews and those Christians, not all, When that alliance emerges, a Jewish-Christian alliance, then you are prohibited from becoming their friends and allies. You do you think the government of Egypt would be comfortable with this verse of the Quran? Or the Saudi government? For those who are ruling Pakistan from Islamabad, that Jewish-Christian alliance has emerged. 
that Jewish Christian alliance has emerged in Europe. It is a European phenomenon, a uniquely European phenomenon. Europe was Christian. It was Christendom. Europe discriminated against the Jews. But a new Europe has emerged in which Christians and Jews have now reconciled with each other. And if you didn't know it, let me tell you, the United States of America is a Judeo-Christian country. Muslims may just be tolerated, but you don't have the status that they have. It is a Judeo-Christian country. When the Jewish Christian Alliance emerges, as it has emerged in Europe, and you are prohibited from becoming their friends and allies, then Allah declares, if you disobey this command, and you join them, and become their friends and allies, you now belong to them. You no longer belong to us. So, we need a new theology for the last age. We cannot remain with the old theology of how do we define a Muslim. Who is a Muslim and who is not a Muslim? We studied this subject as students. This is Kalam. Islamic theology. A large volumes have been written on this subject. But when the last age comes, you need a new theology with which to determine who is a Muslim and who is not. Because Allah says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ and whosoever from amongst you turns to them, as nearly all the governments have done, you no longer belong to us, you now belong to them. Saudi Arabia is a client state of the Jewish Christian Alliance, which today rules the world. They no longer belong to us, they now belong to them. So wake up and recognize the reality of the world in which you are living. This pivotally important verse of the Quran, pivotally important verse of the Quran, for understanding the reality of the world today, when you study it from the books of Tafsir, you will not find the meaning of the verse as it explains tomorrow. I want to turn now to yet another verse of the Quran which tells us about tomorrow. This is the last age. We want to know where is the last age taking us. In Surah Al-Anbiya, Surah number 21 of the Qur'an, the Prophets, there is a remarkable verse. I have a dear student, a sheikh from Africa, from Niger, who did his PhD in Islamic studies and who probably is weeping weeping today Sheikh Saleh Idrisa Ibrahim and when the recording of this lecture reaches him he probably weep even more because for the last two months he's been trying to attend this retreat and today he's not here he has his ticket paid for, but today he's not here. 
because he did not get a visa as yet to come. Having fulfilled all the requirements for a visa, a man with a PhD, a sheikh from Africa, and could not be here in the Caribbean to attend today's address, today's program. But Sheikh Saleh has studied this verse with me. We have jointly worked on this ayah. Every single tafsir we've studied. What is the verse? Allah speaks Ba'adawudh Billah min Shaitan Rajeem. And he says He speaks about a town, Qariya, a town, and he says that he destroyed that town. And having destroyed the town, he placed a ban that they could never return to the town to reclaim it as their own, the people of the town. No. They can never return to this town to reclaim it. Hatta until he's speaking now of tomorrow, until a time comes when one of the major signs of the last day appears. What is it? The companions were sitting talking amongst themselves. When he, the Prophet came and asked, What are you talking about? And they said, We're talking about the signs of the last day. And he said, The last day would not come until and he mentioned ten signs. You know them, don't you? The fingertips. Number one. And these are not given in the chronological order in which they will occur. Number one. Dajjal. The false messiah. The antichrist. Number two. Gog and Magog. Who are in the Bible? Gog and Magog, Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Number three, the return of the son of Mary. The return of the son of Mary. Number four, Dukhan, smoke. Number five, the battle of a creature of the earth. Number six, that the sun would rise even in Barak or from the West. Number seven, eight, and nine. Three Khusuf, plural of Khas. Khas is a sinking of the earth, therefore an earthquake, an earthquake, a sinking of the earth. And the earth sinks down and swallows what it swallows. Hmm? One in the east, one in the west, and the third one in Arabia. And number ten, that a fire will come out of Yemen. I tell you, the Saudis don't like number ten at all. <laughs> <laughs> the fire will come out of Yemen and would drive people to their place of assembly, Judgment Day, perhaps. So these are the ten major signs. And of these ten, there is one, Gog and Magog. This book was just written on this subject. An Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the modern world, and there are many 